p.m. I will call the uh, Finance Committee of September 27, 2022 to order. The first uh, item of business is approval of minutes, draft minutes of the September 13, 2022 finance meeting. I move approval. We have an approval. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, moving on to the next item, public appearances, non-agenda items. We do not have anyone online or in chambers for non-agenda items. Moving forward, item four, the finance director report. I will turn the floor over to Misty Dodge, our finance director. Thank you. Uh, so as you can imagine, the last several weeks have been really diving into the 2023 budget. Uh, so that was released onto the website on Friday as scheduled. Uh, next steps would be the there's a special finance committee meeting next week, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, we'll announce at the council meeting tonight that all of the council is encouraged to attend. This is the chance to ask questions and get information from the department heads so that you all can decide what council amendments you want to submit. And just make sure that you have all the information that you need. Uh, along those lines, there's a lot of, I guess, uncertainty included in the budget from a tax rate perspective. The town of Madison absorption is a very complicated factor. Uh, so I put the estimated assessed values and the estimated tax rates and all of that in there as I think it's going to work. Uh, but a lot of that has not been finalized yet between the county, the Department of Revenue, and then myself uh, figuring out how that's going to happen. So usually my estimates are really, really close. I am not confident that they're going to be as close this time. So just wanted to put that caveat out there. I'll mention it again next week when I kind of kick off my part of the budget. But uh, it's a very unusual year. The year after, everything will be fine, right? They'll just be part of the city. It's not an issue. But this, this transition year has some complication. And then we have some other things about Town of Madison, but I know we have the Committee of the Whole meeting tonight. Um, so we'll be there to share any information about that then, too. Okay. Go ahead, Alder uh, Gerhardt. Thanks. Uh, so in terms of the budget, obviously we have that levy limit space projection. Is that the thing that's going to be up in the air for the budget process? Uh, no. No. Nope. Okay. So the levy limit as, it's, as it is, there's a little bit of uncertainty in there. So the town of Madison piece, there's about $5,000 that we aren't sure if it's city of Madison or city of Fitchburg. Oh, wow. So that part of it we're still trying to figure out. That's not going to break anything. Yeah. Um, but the bigger piece is the values. So the assessed values and the equalized values, the DOR and the town certified values as of 1122 because the town was in existence then, but we're only getting a portion of it. And so we don't have the final numbers from the town yet to be able to divvy that up between the two cities. And then just how that's going to be calculated, especially because there's a TID in the town, is just an extra layer of complication that we need to continue to work through with the DOR. So again, there's, there were at least three ways that I knew it could be done. I picked the way that I thought made the most sense, and then that's what's included in the budget. Randy? Yes, go ahead. So it's the Department of Revenue that makes the final decision on this? More or less. So all of it is based off of different reports that we have to file with the DOR. So they have to be on board whatever, with whatever the approach is because they have to do manual stuff on their end to make it work. So it's very much so a discussion between us um, but they ultimately have really the final call since they're doing the work. But you do have that, those discussions prior to. Yep, so we've started them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've started them for a while now. Right. Mm -hmm. um, haven't talked to her recently because we're waiting for those numbers from the Board of Review at the town. And then I'll have more conversations with her to say, this is how I think we should do it based on what we had talked about before. And then we'll go from there. Okay. So we will definitely figure it out. It's just a matter of how accurate my estimates are in the budget. And I do have them all highlighted as estimates like I usually do. Okay. Additional questions? Seeing none. Uh, further report or? Nope, that was it. Okay, very good. Uh, moving on to item five, review of bills. Uh, 5A, detailed review of checks for $10,000 and above uh, for the period of September 1st to the 15th, 2022, totaling $34,368.20. Uh, do we have any questions from the committee? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to item 5B. Detailed review of all checks issued. Checks 123915 through 123940 for the period of September 1st through the 15th, 2022. Totaling 
$66,765.22. Questions from the committee? All right, <clears throat> very good. Moving on. Excuse me. Uh, to item six, action items, 6A. Do I have a motion to approve resolution R-170-22, authorizing the purchase of street light parts for future repairs? I move approval. We have an uh, approval, a motion. Um, and who will speak to this? Since Bill is here, we are going yeah. to take advantage of his expertise. All right. Thank you, Bill. Bill, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, this is a uh, our annual purchase for repair of street lights, uh, the poles and some fixtures uh, due to knockdowns that we have throughout the community. Uh, some of this is uh, billed under insurance, so we're getting some funds uh, back for that, but we need the full amount to, to purchase the new lights. Very good. Questions from the committee? Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to item 6B. Do I have a motion to approve resolution R-171-22, authorizing approval of Cheryl Drive stormwater improvement improvements bid. I move approval. We have an approval motion. Um, Bill, are you, you're speaking to this as well, correct? Sure. All right, you have the floor. All right, thank you. Um, a few years ago, we had a neighborhood meeting uh, with the people, uh, the residents in the area of uh, the intersection of Cheryl, um, Cheryl Drive and Charleston and then the drainage area surrounding that that comes into that area. There's about 200 acres that uh, drain into this area and go into the McKee Farms Park through a series of swales and ponds. But um, due to the lack of infrastructure upstream from there, a lot of water bypasses the inlets and uh, ends up in this intersection, uh, which can pond uh, up to two and a half feet deep before uh, it starts to drain down. The, the city of Fitchburg met with the residents and we have basically three different projects that, that came out of this. Number one was uh, an issue identified, of course, of street flooding at that intersection. The second one was rear yard drainage. And a third one was sump pump drainage over on Floran. So we had like three different uh, tracks that we were going to take care of. So what we did is we hired a company, uh, EOR, to do a feasibility study to take care of the backyard, of uh, the backyard drainage and the sump pump issue, and um, and then the flooding, and then from that uh, we were going to approach the Floran area, Floran and Charleston or uh, Lyman Lane over there, uh, which had the sump pump issues, which was uh, the, their sump pumps ran across their yard into the street uh, and then came down the road and it, uh, it made some you know slimy streets in the summertime and it had uh, icing in the winter. And, and that was occurring primarily um, uh, during the really wet years that we've had, 2016, 17, and 18, when we had a lot of rain, the groundwater was high, the sump pumps were running a lot. So we had an issue that was identified that we were going to try to take care of. Um, over the course of uh, a year and a half, fast forwarding a little bit, um, we, we came up with a solution to the, the flooding problem at East Sherrill, or at Sherrill Drive in, in Charleston, uh, which is to uh, improve the, the, the pipe structure that's under the ground that goes into the park and excavate and widen the swales that, that lead out of that. Uh, we found that the, the storm system that was in place uh, takes about a two-year storm, and we typically design for a 10-year storm, so it was flooding quite often. Um, so in order to do that, we, we contracted again with EOR to do the design, and uh, we put that out for bid. Uh, the original uh, feasibility study for that project, for the uh, Cheryl Drive project, uh, came out with about uh, $378,000 as an estimate, and we put that amount in the budget. Uh, by the time we got done with the design, the, the cost estimate due to inflation and uh, just the complexity of the job ended up being around $650,000. And when we put it out for bid, uh, it came in at the low bid of $780,000. Um, we did uh, look at how we could fund this, and we did uh, put it out for bid using the uniform guidance uh, for the a APRA, the ARPA funding, available to the city of Fitchburg. Uh, it's a, a stormwater resiliency project that we're using the funding for, so it qualifies for that. 
and um, we were going to use the, the difference between what was uh, in the capital improvement plan and the uh, the bid price for uh, using the ARPA funding. Uh, the Floran and uh, Lyman is is a separate project. It doesn't tie into the Cheryl Drive project at all. Um, the, the storm sewer over there was a, as a project that we were going to install a, a, a pipe behind the curb. Uh, the residents could connect into that and then it would uh, get into McKee Farms Park that way. Uh, the residents um, did not, were not in favor of the project primarily because uh, it was because we were not reconstructing the road and we weren't going to be putting the pipe in at the time, uh, we would have to special assess for those projects. And the residents up there said absolutely not. It's not a problem right now. Uh, but we, we do have it on the books uh, for a future year project like in 2030 or something. So if it's ever needed in the future, we could bring it forward again. But uh, the two projects aren't, aren't tied together. Uh, what we did do uh, with the funding that was available in the capital project for that was we reallocated those to a couple of other stormwater projects that uh, we did we could not use ARPA funding for uh, the design. We didn't bid them out correctly, so we could not use that. So we reallocated the Floran um, funding for the sump pumps to the Seminole Glen study and the Duns Marsh study. So um, those were previous uh, studies that we have ongoing. And we should be having, just as an update on that, we should be having meetings on those within about six weeks um, after they get some information together on that. So with regard to this project, uh, the Cheryl Drive stormwater study, yes, it is over budget uh, quite a bit, but it is consistent with the bids that we've been seeing uh, for other, other projects. Um, typically about 18% over construction budget. So, uh, we're asking for approval for this. Uh, it, uh, the budget amendment requires a two-thirds vote by council. Um, I'm not sure finance too, but. Mm -hmm. Well, no, yeah. just council. Okay, yeah. So if you have any questions on that, I'll be happy to answer those. Very good. Just to back up from the, on the, on the uh, dollar sign now, the, the portion that was under the CIP would remain in the CIP and anything above would be ARPA dollars? I see shaking of heads. I believe you stated that earlier, Bill. Yes. yes. I just wanted to make certain. I'd also like to mention, if I may, that yes. uh, in the ARPA and TID closure investment plan that was adopted by council, there was a line in there for stormwater projects. It didn't identify specific projects, um, but that's why we felt that this project was in line with the direction from the council with how to how to spend those monies in the first place. Sure, sure. Project that, in my mind, is, is warranted. Uh, additional questions from the committee? Um, do you recall how much we put towards stormwater? So we didn't have a specific number. It was part of that infrastructure yes. number. So it was just a big, a big pot of money in total. And then, so we've currently earmarked, or we, we did a budget amendment for 2022 for certain of those projects uh, that we kind of did as that first batch. So that has been actually assigned a dollar amount. And then in the CIP, we talked about other things and then the budget. If you see the mayor's budget, it talks a lot more about other specific dollar amounts um, that are in line with that project or the investment plan. Alder Gerhardt, go ahead. Yeah, just one, I, I can't remember, Bill, if you exactly said this, but I thought Ben's memo was quite good, and the, the point he made about the fact that increasing the swale capacity will help with future stormwater infrastructure projects 10, 20 years in the future in this area, so we can actually convey that water out, outward. Um, I thought that was a, a good point about setting us up for the future for these stormwater projects in the area. All right, thank you. All right, oh yes, Alder Wheeler, go ahead. So, Bill, like one of my concerns is, you know, making sure we have the correct infrastructure for for the city. Um, do you project that we'll be doing more of these as the city grows, and you know, more construction, more impervious surfaces, and that we have to worry about where the stormwater is going to go? Uh, I, I would see that with uh, the trends that we've been seeing with our storms recently in the past ten to fifteen years. Um, that uh, we can't get the water into the pipes. And even though the pipes might be big enough to convey the water, we just can't get it in there. In other parts, you know, the pipes aren't big enough. So uh, we have to look at, you know, a different way of handling our stormwater. Um, and that's something that we're planning to do in the future. And uh, it, it, we're, we're trying to set the infrastructure up now right at the base of the bottom of the hill. So when we start moving up into the hills, we can accommodate those as well. Okay, thank you. 
Yes, go ahead, Alder Gabbard. I also just wanted to mention that for RCC, once Ben is more settled in his role uh, as environmental engineer, we typically like ask the environmental engineer to do kind of a stormwater presentation as part of RCC, or we have the last couple of years. So I don't know if that's going to happen this year, but hopefully it'll happen next year. And when it does, I'll let the council know in case you want to sit in and, and maybe even provide questions in advance because um, it's just such an important long-term, you know, comprehensive conversation that I think the council should also be aware of. So. That also might be a good <clears throat> committee of the whole presentation. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, further questions? Discussion? Hearing none, with the, I'll place the uh, motion before us to a vote. All, all of those that are in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. <clears throat> Moving on to item 6C. Uh, motion to approve resolution R-176-22, Second Amendment to the Crescent Crossing Subdivision Improvement Agreement related to park improvement and fees. I move approval. We have a motion for approval. And who, Misty, are you speaking to this tonight? I don't know, Bill. Bill or Scott, one of you guys want to do it? Oh, Scott's on. Yep. Scott, how would you like, would you like to address this uh, resolution? Uh, it, I, I certainly can, but Bill, this is really kind of Bill's, uh, Bill's lane, if you would, with the developer's agreement. Uh, I, I might just preface it that it's a, it's a new way of doing business, if you would, and developing the parks that uh, we're adding a park development piece to the developer's agreement. Uh, they're still uh, required to go through this, the public bidding process and, and those kinds of things, but we're including that work in the developer's agreement, which you see here. Bill, would you like to comment further? Or? Sure. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing an amendment to the original agreement um, that we would uh, provide the framework for the developer to um, for what responsibilities developer has for the park improvements uh, and uh, the, the cost to the city or what we would be capping the funds at uh, for the developer, so. Good. Questions from the committee? Discussion? Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it, motion carries. <clears throat> Moving on to the next action. I can okay. talk a little louder now. There we go. Right into the mic. Is that better? All right. All right. Thank you. Moving on to uh, action item 6D. <clears throat> Do I have a motion to approve resolution R-77, excuse me, R-177-22, authorizing acceptance of the 2022 McKee Road pavement marking bid? I move approval. All right. We have a motion for approval. Um, Bill, I suspect you're going to speak to this item as well. All right. Um, on McKee Road, between Fish Hatchery Road and Seminole Highway, uh, we're going to be reapplying the, the pavement markings on that road, uh, the white dash, the solid uh, white lines. We're also going to be enhancing this a little bit by putting in bike buffers. So there will be an additional line uh, next to the bike lanes that are out there. Um, we put this out for bid. We received one bid. Uh, they're a reputable company, and they'll be doing night work. So um, it was a little bit more expensive, but due to the traffic that's out there, uh, the traffic control during the day would just be, it would double the cost. So um, we'll be getting out there between now and the time it gets too cold to do it uh, to reply those paint markings and uh, get that done this year. Very good. <clears throat> Questions from the committee? Yes, Alder Wheeler, go ahead. Bill, it seemed like these markings didn't last very long. Or are we going to be doing something different, maybe to get a little bit more time before we have to do it again? Yes. Um, when uh, the Dane County came through a few years ago to apply the chip seal to the project, uh, they used water latex paint. And it doesn't adhere as well to um, the chips, and uh, they got washed or, you know, removed pretty quickly. So uh, we're putting down epoxy, and we're typically get you know seven to ten years on on the painting on those. Yes, Alder Gerhardt, go ahead. Just a, I mean, I don't know if you can answer this, but that stretch of McKee has a, quite a speeding problem, given that it's forty, and as people go downhill, people speed up to fifty, fifty-five. I've even seen sixty, it, and and luckily there's not a lot of crosswalks there. But is these markings? Is there any? 
any new, you know, thought in transportation about how markings can help direct speed, or is that way out the scope of this type of um, this change? No, actually, it's right in scope. Um, we are reducing the lane widths from 12 feet down. One's going to be an 11-foot lane, and another one's going to be 10-foot. So, um, you know, those are shown to reduce speeds when, when the cars are closer together like that. Uh, but it's, you know, driver preference. They, they're going to do what they want to do. Great. Oh, that's good to know, though. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Very good. Quest additional questions? Hearing none, place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion, the ayes have it, motion carries. Uh, we will move on to action item 6E. Do I have a motion to approve resolution R-179-22, uh, Veterans Memorial Park, Gorman Wayside, flagpoles and gazebo donation acceptance? I move approval. Well, we have a motion for approval. Um, and Misty, are you speaking to this? I uh, no, this one let's let Scott do. Scott. Thank, thank you. Uh, this is, uh, uh, certainly I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the veterans uh, the volunteer group, and I did, I thought I saw Mike Croft there, so I suspect he's in the audience, but uh, the group continues to make improvements at Gorman Wayside at our Veterans Memorial Park uh, at no cost to the city. Uh, and some of the recent uh, developments or improvements are uh, they installed three uh, new flagpoles behind the existing new memorial. Uh, and then they're also uh, proposing to uh, build a gazebo uh, that will be placed uh, in the inner circle at uh, the Gorman Wayside uh, uh, Park uh, in Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, and they, they did uh, keep the Park Commission informed on on their work and the Park Commission uh, echoed the thank you to the group and, and certainly uh, recommending acceptance of, of these donations. <clears throat> Very good, Scott. Um, you are correct. Mike Croft is in the audience and along with Mark Jones. Um, thank you. Thank you for this gift. Yeah, I, uh, I really appreciate it too as an Army veteran and I run from um, Burnland down to Wayland and run back and there's always something special when I see that memorial running um, when I run by and the kiosk is going to be a huge addition you know for people who want to come and eat lunch and reflect I, I really like that addition to it so thank you yes Alder Gerhardt thank you I, I'll, I'll echo that as thank you so much is there going to be sort of an opening when this is unveiled I'm curious Mark Jones, uh, 2266 South Syene Road, Fitchburg. I'm uh, one of the committee members uh, on the Veterans Park Committee. And yes, uh, to answer your question, um, we, we're going to have, uh, we hope to have a grand opening on Veterans Day. Um, but I'm not sure that the gazebo, because of the process that we've um, been required to go through, um, which has kind of put us behind about a month. So um, we'll see if that will be ready by then. I'm not sure. So, but yeah, we, we uh, intend on having a grand opening on Veterans Day. We have to get a, the flagpoles were donated by Oak Bank and we moved them, they were used. And uh, re the, uh, the road crew reinstalled them for us. Good, did a great job. And um, so we've been trying to keep the cost um, and spend our, uh, our our dollars wisely. So uh, um, we have to have a a, um, a solar uh, light um, bef installed before that, uh, so that we, the American flag has to be uh, lit if you leave it up overnight. So um, so yes, to answer your question, yes, we that's our plan. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Thank Very you. good. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Very good. I'll place the motion before us then to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Moving on to 6F. 
Do I have a motion to approve resolution R-180-22, approving the Town of Madison assets and liabilities apportionment agreement between the City of Madison and the City of Fitchburg? I move approval. We have a motion for approval. And Misty, you're speaking to this item, of course? Yes. You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, so uh, as you know, we're taking over a portion of the Town of Madison. A portion will come to the City of Fitchburg and a portion of it will go to the City of Madison. When this cooperative agreement was approved 20 years ago, uh, there was a clause uh, which is snipped into the staff memo that's included in the packet uh, that says that the final assets and liabilities, so what the town has and what they owe once they go away, will be split between the two cities. Uh, it prefers that we would come to an agreement between the city of Madison and the city of Fitchburg, but there is a default option in the statute. So there was an incentive really to make sure that we were on the same page and could come to terms about how this was going to work. And I'll say the city of Madison has been a great partner in all of this. We've been able to address certain issues and we've all been very reasonable trying to make sure that this is going as we expect it to. Uh, so we looked at three different ways that we could split between the two cities. Uh, the, and all of the ways are more or less in that 75, 25% range. So we thought it was easiest if we just picked that 75, 25 standard allocation. Uh, so everything that doesn't have a default Sex, uh, default split uh, will go to that 75-25 allocation. So the exceptions would be anything that's TID related will come to the city of Fitchburg because that TID is in the city. And I'll tell you that I'm not expecting any extra increment available in the TID. So I'm pretty sure it's going to come over to us as zero. Uh, anything for the infrastructure, so the roads, the parks, uh, the everything else that they have, the water utilities, the sewer lines, etc. Uh, that will go to whichever municipality that infrastructure is located in. And we're not going to assign a value to it or any of that. It just is going to go straight right off the top to whichever municipality that was, is within. Uh, then the rest of the stuff, so town hall I'll talk about in a little bit, but they also have equipment. They've got um, other just miscellaneous, you know, paper clips and equipment and all that stuff is going to still be there. Uh, so uh, there's an an agreement that whatever the value that we get from selling that stuff will be split that same 75, 25. But before we go and sell that, sell that equipment or that, that stuff, uh, the two cities will be able to say whether or not they wanted to take that to, their, to our side. So for example, there's a tar kettle that the city of Fitchburg is very interested in and we're hopeful that we can get that. So we will say, we want that and it will come to our side of the, the ledger, but we still will have to pay then 100% into the kitty of the split because um, we only get 25% of that value. So we'll go through that exercise on all of the stuff that they have and it, the cities would have the first right to go through that. And included in the agreement is a very clear process about how we decide if we want it, what if we both want it, what if neither of us want it, all of that is all outlined in the agreement. Uh, it does, however, give a lot of discretion to the two finance directors, so myself and then Dave Schmedeke at the city of Madison. Uh, if, as we come to items or come to issues on how to dispose of the things that are still left at the town, we have the discretion to decide how we want to do that under the terms of this agreement. Uh, town hall is obviously a big one. So under the agreement, the city of Fitchburg had essentially the first right to say we want that on our side. We still are only entitled to 25% of the value of it, but we had that right first to come and put that on our side of the ledger. City of Fitchburg is interested in it after a lot of conversation between staff and elected officials and they're just, because it's not in the city of Fitchburg, there wasn't a use for it really on our side. City of Madison was very interested in it. They plan to use it for government operations. Uh, so we did an original appraisal a year or two ago. We did an updated appraisal recently, uh, which increased the value. And so the city of Madison is going to write us a check at the termination of the town for $607,500, which is our 25% share of the value of the town. So that's really helpful for Fitchburg because now we have this pot of money that's available for all these unknown things that we know are going to happen. So we know that there's a, about a million dollars worth of external debt that the town still has that we have 25% share of that we'll have to pay in. We know those severance payments that are made, we have 25% of that obligation. And then the rest of the stuff that the city or the town of Madison have, we don't really think it's going to value out to be all that much. So my guess is that at the end of the day, we will have an amount owed. And so this $600,000 will help pay for that. 
So uh, what's included in this resolution as well is putting that money, once we get it, into the Town of Madison CIP project and just letting it sit there. We will decide once we go through the final allocations and all of this, we will see how much of that we need to tap into for our net obligation and then see what the balance is and then council will decide how you want to spend that at that point. But I don't wanna talk about how to spend it now because I don't know how much of it we'll need for the town. Uh, and then the external debt I kind of talked about. Um, so there is about a million dollars of external debt that we expect to be still outstanding when they go away. Uh, the, sorry, back up. So the town hall, you know how we had kind of the first right to take that to our side. The fire protection and EMS assets, we had that same first right, but the town of Madison sold all of that. So there's nothing there for us to elect. And then the final town expenditures, uh, so it includes the costs of the severance. We have a final audit that we'll have the town of Madison go through. We have this whole allocation of all of the stuff kind of thing that we have to go through. So we won't know what that final amount is. We're hopeful that end of, or the second quarter of 2023, that final information will be available, but it might not be. It might be a little delayed from that. Um, but at the end of it, we'll be at that 75-25 split. And then I kind of mentioned about the two cities, how the finance directors have that authority. So it applies to the assets that are available as well as other just things that we didn't see coming. We need to be able to be flexible and address these things as they come. So it gives that authority to me. Obviously I will work with Chad and we will keep the council in the loop on anything that's important or not insignificant. Very good, <clears throat> Very good. thank you for the uh, detailed uh, readout. Uh, you mentioned the uh, fire EMS, everything was sold off, is that yep. correct? What about on the police side? That equipment is still there. Mm. So they sold it because they hired, basically hired the city of Madison to do those functions. Mm. They didn't need the equipment anymore. Right. The town of Madison sold it. The police department is still in operation. So they do have some equipment and I know our police department has identified certain pieces that they're interested oh. in taking and putting on our side of the ledger. Okay, very good. Questions, additional questions from the uh, committee? Alder Wheeler? I just think it was a good idea to just take the money for the town hall. Because, you, you know, I think that was part of their public works also. Mm -hmm. And so you don't know how much it would cost to kind of remediate things, you know, with public works. You always got oil around and gasoline. So I just thought it was a good idea, you know, and I'm glad that it came to that, that we just take 25% of the value of the building. Agreed. Alder Gerhardt. I just thought it was a great memo and great explanation. So thanks so much for being so thorough. And it's, it's nice to finally have a plan and, and know exactly how this is going to end up. So looking like things are shaping up better than maybe we had hoped. So I agree. It's nice to have a plan and just kind of know where we're going. And again, kudos to the city of Madison for being such good partners with us as we're trying to figure this all out. It is a highly unusual circumstance and trying to do it has, has created a lot more challenges than we expected. But it's good to see that there is... At least this step is almost done. Very good. Any any further comments, questions? Seeing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The uh, ayes have it, motion carries. Moving on, moving on to G, 6G. Do I have a motion to approve resolution R-182-22, authorizing the sale of remnant land, out, outlot two of CSM, 16005 at Ochala Drive and Fish Hatchery Road. I move approval. We have a motion for approval. Uh, Ms. D, you will speak to this item as well? I will. Okay. So when the city was redoing Fish Hatchery Road, kind of that north part of it, uh, one of the pieces that was required was land purchase. And we purchased a big section of land in order to get this project done. And uh, now that the road is through, there's this little remnant piece available uh, that doesn't really provide much value to the city, um, but it's right at the uh, edge of the UW Credit Union property. So they, uh, we worked with them to say, if, you know, if they're interested in it, what would that cost be? We looked at our total costs for how much we spent on that entire thing and prorated it to get to this cost. Um, so it's a piece of land that will help UW Credit Union and isn't of use to the city, and the money that we get from it will go back into the TID to help pay for that fish hatchery road cost. Very good questions, discussion. Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The 
Ayes have it. Motion carries. Moving on to our final item, and that's 6H, uh, motion to approve resolution R-183-22, amending the 2022 grants donation fund budget, police department bicycle and patrol equipment. I move approval. We have a motion for approval, and um, I'm going to turn it over to our chief, deputy chief. Uh, thank you. Yeah, this, this money was uh, another opportunity for us to utilize the grant funding, uh, the ARPA funds, um, the Safer Communities Initiative uh, provided to us by uh, the governor. And this fits a specific purchasing category within the, uh, within the grant, and it gives us the opportunity to uh, definitely enhance and improve our very antiquated um, bike bicycles that we currently have that were purchased in the 1990s. Uh, so not only does this provide us the opportunity to purchase four standard uh, p uh, police bicycles, but it also uh, provides us the opportunity to purchase four electric bikes and this is electric assist it's not a standalone moped that you can just press a button and go so the officers who are utilizing will actually have to pedal uh, to get any kind of assistance out of it but it does offer us two different opportunities uh, two different types of bicycles to enhance our patrol initiatives very good thank you questions from the committee discussion just a comment I, li I like it you know, I mean, the more we could get um, cops out of the cars and closer to the community and riding bikes, you know, through parks, bike paths and everything, that's the best way to do it. So I'm glad um, you guys are going this way. It's, a, it's nice to update. You said 1990 was the last? Yeah, late yeah. 1990s, I okay. believe, was the purchase yeah. of the bikes we currently have. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Alder Gerhardt. I also think it's a great idea, and it boggles my mind that you have 1990s bikes. Um, but I'm curious about the the liability for for officers on a bike versus in a car. Is so that... any any officers that do um, choose to be on our bike patrol unit do have to pass a certification course. Okay. Uh, so they are uh, trained by an internationally recognized um, bike safety course for police officers. Uh, as far as the the enhanced liability, I'm sure. Uh, there are opportunities that uh, would present themselves that there could be an enhanced uh, um, risk to safety, but I think those are definitely outweighed by the opportunities they have to mm -hmm. enhance uh, from a community uh, policing initiative standpoint, visibility, and also from a crime deterrent side as well. Um, they, they provide some sort of uh, uh, stealth opportunities if they're if there are um, vehicle break-ins in the middle of the night, instead of being in a squad car, fully marked squad car, uh, officers have the ability to be either be out on foot or utilizing the bikes. Um, so it provides us multiple benefits. Okay. Thanks. Uh, on that note, are the bikes, um, do they travel with a police car and, and so they, they're able to get out and utilize one or the other? Is that yes, generally uh, how it that, works? That's correct. Yeah. Um, with the bikes that we have now, your standard bikes, uh, we would take them out into the field. We have bike racks for the, the okay. uh, squad cars. Um, with the uh, opportunity for the electric bikes, we could leave straight from the police department or we could utilize uh, the fire departments as well as kind of uh, satellite hubs mm -hmm. for, uh, for the bike patrol uh, okay. bicycles as well. Great. Additional... Questions, comments? Seeing none, I'll, I'll place the motion before us to a, a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. That concludes our action. That concludes our action items. Moving on to item seven, announcements. The next regular meeting is October 11th, 2022, and budget presentation meetings is scheduled for October 4th and 5th, 2022. Do I have a motion to adjourn? One last thing, Randy. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. It's um, National Senior Center Month um, this month, and the Senior Center is having a, an event um, right outside, um, and it's going to be a – they got a band, the Red Hot Horn Dogs, and that, they play from 6 to 8, but plus they also have food from JD's. So anybody who's listening or in the, in the um, audience here can stop down there. It's part fundraiser also. So – 
Anything, anything, anything further? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I move adjourn me. <laughs> I want so, to go get a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it, motion carries. We are adjourned at 6.42 p.m. Thank you.